In this tutorial, we're going to go over the state machine approach to developing multi-screen display programs in Guide. Display programs in Guide have to be treated slightly differently than control programs. Guide is set up to mimic visually the logical flow of your program. For controllers, you can essentially read your program as it flows from left to right. The program detects things going on in the real world through signal values on its pins and messages received on the CAN bus. It does some calculations based on those inputs and past history, and then does work in the real world by activating outputs on its pins and sending out CAN commands. It then goes back and does the same thing over again. It's all very straightforward and easy to visualize and guide, which is one of its strengths. Display programs, however, are very different. A program might have 10 different screens, but only one or a subset of them will be active and displayed at a time. This calls for a different program flow, and it's frequently implemented in Guide as a state machine. It's not immediately obvious to new developers how to implement this in Guide, so we want to give you a head start by showing you one way that it could be implemented. Let's get started. Before we even start coding in Guide, we should have a layout of what we're looking to implement in our display. We should have a flowchart for our screens, which shows where you can go from one screen to another and how. Here, for instance, we start in our init or splash screen. The only way out of it is for a certain time to elapse. That puts us in the main screen state, and then there's no way back to the init screen. From the main screen, we can only go to our second or third screen states, and the only way back from them is to press the fourth button. We see that there is no way to go directly from the second screen to the third screen state. This is a very simplified example, of course, with very few states and simple transitions, but this idea can be expanded out to much larger cases. As a tip, to keep things straight during coding, you can import documents into your guide project to consult during development. Here we'll import a PDF version of the state machine of our display application. Now let's look into our guide application. Here we have a top-level view of a multi-screen display program, for which we just looked at the flowchart, implemented as a state machine in Guide. You can see right away that this display program contains four screens, each screen representing a state. We're going to keep this example simple and say that the four screens are mutually exclusive. So in the main screen state, the main screen and only the main screen is displayed. In the second screen state, only the second screen is displayed, and so forth. Notice that we keep track of our state with two signal values. Requested screen on the left side, which is the state or screen requested for this loop, and request on the right side, which is the screen or state requested for the next loop. The other key signal values to note are the current screen and previous screen values. Each screen calculates its screen or state number by incrementing that of the screen just before it. The init screen, for instance, takes a value of negative 1 for the preceding screen, since it doesn't exist, and increments it by 1 to get its own screen number of 0. You can see that the active screen on the first loop will be 0, which corresponds to the init or splash screen. Afterwards, the active screen will be the screen requested in the previous loop. Before we look into the workings of the state pages, note that we've changed our button inputs to trigger on a negative transition or the release edge of a button press. So that's what we'll be looking for when we allow the user to change screens. Also note that we begin every loop by receiving and end every loop by sending CAN data. Now let's take a look into the screen pages to see what's happening there. We'll start by looking at the main screen, but the basic flow in each screen is the same. Remember that each screen page represents a state in our state machine. The first thing that the screen does is calculate its own state number by incrementing that of the previous screen. Once it has its own number, it compares that with the signal value requested screen, which once again is the active screen for this loop. If they are the same, then we know that I am the active screen for this loop. We also put the calculated value of our screen on the screen bus, 
so it can be used in the request page. If I am the active screen for this loop, you can see that I enable the subsequent pages and screens for my state. Function in this case is just a page where we group all work that needs to be done in this state, like calculating a gauge value or menu navigation. The request page is where we allow the user to request a new screen or state for the next loop. The logic implemented here has to correspond to the state machine diagram that we made earlier. If you remember from our state machine flowchart, we only allowed the user to leave the main screen under two conditions. First, they had to be currently in the main screen state, and they could go to the second and third screens by pressing the first or second buttons respectively. One of the things that we use here to implement the state machine is the value connect component. The value connect component is the only component where you can join the output from two components on the same signal wire without a connecting component. The value of the signal will be that of the last value connect component that had a true applied to it. In our case here, if both button 1 and 2 had been activated this loop, the requested screen for the next loop would be the third screen, since its value connect component is evaluated after that of the second screen. The other thing to note about the value connect component is that the component sharing an output signal value can be on different pages. So this signal representing the requested screen for the next loop is found here, but also in all the other screen state pages. Remember, though, that only the active screen or state is allowed to make the request for the next screen or state. If we look in the other state pages, we'll see that they follow the same scheme. I take the number of the previous screen and increment it to calculate my own screen number or state number. I check to see whether or not I am the active screen for this loop. If I'm not, I don't show my screen content, I disable any calculations in the function page, and I disable the possibility to request a new screen from here. The init screen follows, once again, the same pattern. All we do is display a splash screen, there's nothing in the functions page, and the request page accepts no user input. It just automatically selects the main screen for the next loop after a certain delay, in this case 3 seconds. You'll see on most of the state pages that there is no output produced. In the second page, however, we allow the user to change the screen language. This language value could be put on the output bus to be passed to the other screens or to be used outside the page, as we do here. Another thing to note is that this layout allows us to easily add new screens. All that needs to be done is to copy one of the pages, insert it into the list below the last page, and then extend the connecting wires and buses. We would, of course, need to change the internals of the function and request pages to correspond to the state machine diagram that we started with. Lastly, we've looked primarily at the VBSC or Vector Based Screen Editor in these examples, as that is the display programming environment used on the majority of current displays, as well as for future displays. If you're developing in the Classic Editor, however, on one of our older displays, like the 200 series, the technique used is the same. The only difference is that the Classic Editor uses the two components of Define Areas page and Define Screen page whereas the vector-based screen editor, which you've been using in this tutorial, uses just the single show screen component. Otherwise, the general principle is the same. So this has been a quick look at an example of developing a multi-screen display application and guide using a state machine approach. This was a very simple display scheme with very few states, but we hope that you can see how this could be expanded to make much more complex displays. 
We hope that you found this useful and it will get you started developing your own displays. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at plus one help desk, P L U S, plus sign, the digit one, help desk, at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.